Well, there are universally agree that there's, there's two texts you can read on this subject. They're both by me. Uh, there's a black one and the blue one. Um, and you should all buy at least two copies of these. Um, one for yourself and one to give to your parents for Christmas. Um, and if you download them from an illegal Russian website, then a bear will come around the corner and eat you up. Um, if you're only going to buy one, then buy the blue one, because it's a nicer colour. Uh, this is also a graduate textbook, uh, whereas this is more of a mon monograph. Um, so, um, as I gather you all come from uh, rather diverse backgrounds, I thought I'd start at a, a fairly basic level uh, talking about manifolds and vector bundles, um, but hopefully we'll get a bit more advanced in a, a couple of lectures. Um, so, yeah, so I do encourage questions uh, both during the lectures and there's going to be a question and answer sessions later on, I think. Um, but we'll start with a section one on uh, differential uh, geometry uh, background. So the topics I'm planning to cover are vector bundles, connections on vector bundles, um, and curvature, uh, and then um, Riemannian metrics, uh, Riemannian curvature, uh, the Lebedevsky connection, that kind of thing. Uh, so let's start off uh, with the section 1.1 1 .1, uh, on um, manifolds uh, and vector bundles. So I think uh, I want to assume that basically you've all done a uh, some basic course in differential geometry, uh, but just to remind you, uh, we will uh, be uh, discussing uh, smooth manifolds uh, so I'm going to write my manifolds usually as X um, uh, where X is basically a topological space Uh, which has to satisfy uh, the global conditions of being Hausdorff and second countable. Sometimes people assume paracompact instead of second countable, but um, it doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, and uh, this is equipped uh, with uh, an atlas. Um, so let's write that curly A. I usually write my atlases as um, a set of pairs ui phi i for so little i in big I. Um, so this is an indexing set. Um, uh, so Okay, so then the ui and phi i are charts. So um, ui is contained in r to the n, uh, is an open set, where uh, n is the some fixed dimension of our manifold x, uh, and phi i has to go from uh, ui into x, uh, is a continuous map uh, and it's a homeomorphism, meaning an isomorphism of open sets uh, with an open set, the image of phi i containing x. Um, so that's what a chart means. Uh, and you have uh, the union over all, little i and big i, the image of phi i is x. So um, the charts cover x uh, and um, phi, oh, two pairs, ui, phi i, uj, phi j, are pairwise compatible. Um, meaning that, um, oh, sorry. 
phi j of phi inverse is smooth on its domain. Uh, and the smooth inverse uh, for all little i, little j, and big i. Um, okay, and um, we'll also be de uh, talking about smooth maps f going from x into y, smooth maps between manifolds. Okay, so this is all very basic. Um, next, let's talk about vector bundles. So, a vector bundle uh, E over X. Um, so, X is our base manifold. Uh, so, this is uh, a smooth manifold E um, and uh, well so let's say of rank K so that's a dimension really K is 0, 1 and so on um, a natural number so it's a smooth manifold E uh, and uh, a smooth map Uh, let's call it pi, going from E into X. And that's not all the structure yet. Uh, um, and so the rest of the structure is that for each point little x, in big X, uh, we are given the structure of a real vector space um, on the fiber E little x, which is pi inverse of little x. Um, uh, and this is for all, or for each, little x in big X. So for each point x in the base big X, uh, we have, um, you can think about um, E as being like this, maybe E is two dimensional, X is one dimensional. Um, and the projection is mapping things down. Um, we don't do colors here, okay. Um, and then for each point little x, the fiber E little x is the part of E lying above x. So each fiber is given the structure of a vector space, which is in fact going to be finite dimensional vector space of dimension k. But that will come out of the, uh, this condition in a moment. So the condition is as such that uh, for all, well, Every little x in big X has an open neighborhood uh, U in X containing little x, um, and uh, an, well, a homeomorphism, no, let's say a diffeomorphism. Uh, between uh, pi inverse of u, which is an open subset of E, um, and um, u cross r to the k, where k was the rank of our vector bundle, um, such that, uh, well, We draw ourselves a, a square. Uh, 
So u is on the bottom. Um, up here we have pi inverse of u, which is uh, the open subset of v. Um, and over here we have u cross r to the k. Uh, there's an identification here, uh, a diffeomorphism of smooth manifolds. Um, and this square commutes. Um, well, so this square commutes. And once we know that, we can identify um, let's say E little y uh, with uh, a point y cross r to the k um, for little y in u. So once we know that this square commutes, we know that for each point little y in u, the fiber ey up here gets identified with the point y cross r to the k. Um, this should identify the vector space structures. On uh, the fiber e at y and uh, well, y cross r to the k, which is just isomorphic to r to the k with its usual vector space structure. So this definition is a way of saying that, well, we give each fiber ex a structure of a vector space, we want these uh, structures to vary smoothly and um, trivially, well, well, and locally trivially, over the base. Okay. Um, so that's the formal definition of a vector space. Um, and okay, so well, important examples. Uh, uh, vector bundles uh, are the tangent bundle. Tx, uh, cotangent bundle, T star of x, um, and the tensor bundles, um, big tensor to the k, Tx, tensored with big tensor to the L, T star of x, and so on. So. In my lectures, I'm only really going to be interested in the vector bundle being the tangent bundle or one of these associated bundles here. Uh, so Yuji, I think, will be talking about um, manifolds together with uh, a vector bundle which is not really attached to the manifold at all, it's just some extra data. Okay, uh, so... Um, So, a section uh, S of a vector bundle uh, E over X uh, is um, well a smooth map uh, little s going from X into E such that. Uh, pi composed with S uh, is the identity map on X, um, which is the same as saying that S at the point X lies in the fiber E at X for each little x in big X. So in a picture, um, if this is E, up and down to X, um, then S is some kind of a, it's a choice of element um, of the fiber uh, for each point little x, big X. Um, and 
because we're working with manifolds, we can require this to be a smooth map, uh, which means that these uh, points S of X vary smoothly with the base point X. They're not merely continuous or arbitrary. Um, uh, so, and then S of X varies smoothly with X, with X, which means that uh, we're going to be able to talk about differentiating um, sections. So, uh, just as an example, um, so a vector field uh, is uh, a section uh, S of Tx. So, I'm going to use the notation S lies in gamma of Tx. So big gamma of a vector bundle means uh, the sections of the vector bundle, the set of sections, and in fact it's a, it's a real vector space. Um, so uh, so if you want to think about this visually, then um, a vector field is kind of the set of arrows on your manifold pointing in some direction. Um, so, you can think of a vector field as the uh, velocity of uh, a fluid in motion on X. So if, for example, your manifold is the surface of the Earth, um, that would be a two-dimensional manifold, then the, the wind speed and velocity um, and direction uh, gives you a vector field um, on, on your manifold X. So everywhere the, the wind is pointing in some direction. Um, and if you've got... Um, you can also follow the... If, if you start at a point, you can follow the fluid flow. So, starting at a point, you can uh, look at the kind of. You can solve an ODE uh, for the motion of a point moving uh, along a vector field, and that's going to be uh, important later. Okay, uh, so if F going from X into R is a smooth map. Uh, and uh, V is, well, well before, no, before that, um, then, well, we have the uh, derivative TF. So this is basically all the partial derivatives of the function in the coordinate directions. Um, but globally, this is a smooth section of the cotangent bundle. Um, and if um, V is a vector field on X, then, um, okay, call the LV of F, which is V dotted with DF. So this is now a function on F. Uh, so the notion, notation LV is the lead derivative in direction V. Um, so here we've got a vector field which lives in uh, Tx. Df lives in T star of x, which are dual vector bundles. And the dot here means that we pair uh, the tx of the t star of x to give you a, a number or a function. Uh, so this uh, is 
the derivative of uh, f in direction v. Okay. Um, right, so far so good. Now, next I want to start talking about connections. Um, so connections are going to be very important both for the subject of holonomy groups and also for Yuji's lectures about gauge theory because Yuji will basically be talking about um, connections on vector bundles satisfying some curvature conditions uh, and uh, moduli spaces, so families of such um, things. Um, <coughs> let's have a section 1.2 about uh, connections on vector bundles. So, um, so let's suppose that we have Um, e over x is a vector bundle. Uh, and you have some section S um, in the sections of E is a section. So, I mean, manifolds are basically kind of a general class of spaces on which you can do calculus, what you can do differentiation and integration. So, uh, and that's why we have smooth manifolds rather than topological manifolds. So, um, what we need to, uh, to understand now is what does it mean to differentiate uh, a section of E? Um, so, what would it mean to differentiate? S. Okay. Um, well, so you can try and write down what you think the derivative would be. And we need to differentiate S in some direction. So let's give ourselves a vector field. Uh, so, well, if V is a vector field on uh, X, uh, we could try to define uh, the derivative, or L, no, let's not write the derivatives, let's write some kind of partial derivative of S in the direction V. Uh, is equal to, and that's right, put it there because the right hand side is not actually going to make sense, the limit as epsilon goes to zero of s at the point, let's say this is at some point little x, s at the point x plus epsilon v minus s at the point x all over epsilon. Okay, so that's and we're taking the definition of differentiating a function um, and we're trying to apply it in this, in this context. So here, what I mean by x plus epsilon v is the point which you get by starting at the point x and then moving along the vector field v for time epsilon. This is just another point uh, in the manifold x. Um, so um, if, if s were a function, this would actually be well defined. Um, Okay, but it's not. Okay, so, but this is not well defined. Uh, because, uh, well, the two things, s at x plus epsilon v and s at x, lie in two different vector spaces.
they lie in the vector space E at the point x plus epsilon of v and E at the point x. So if if they were the same vector space, or if we could if we could identify those vector spaces, then we could define the derivative. So um, okay, well, so to make this well defined. Uh, we need some extra data and extra data is called uh, a connection on our vector bundle E so a way of thinking about what uh, what E does or what, well, that's, it's going to be we're going to write it nabla, which is a kind of upside down tri triangle. This is actually a uh, Egyptian character, I believe. Um, a connection nabla on E, uh, and so then the well, roughly what the job that nabla does uh, is that nabla identifies uh, the um, fibers uh, E at X and E at Y when uh, X and Y are um, when, they're, when they're close in X uh, and you might want to say uh, infinitesimally close so if X and Y are two points in your manifold which are very close together then the connection identifies the fibres uh, of the points there, and then we can think about S here and here as living in the same vector space, and we can subtract them and take a limit. Okay, but that's that's not the actual definition of a connection. So there are several ways of defining a connection. Uh, let me give you one. So make a definition. Um, a, a connection uh, nabla on E uh, is um, uh, an R linear map nabla going from the sections of E into the sections of E tensored with T star of X, satisfying a bunch of conditions. Okay, so here E is a real vector bundle. Uh, e tensored with T star of X is also a real vector bundle. So um, basically algebraic operations you can do to vector spaces you can also do to vector bundles over a fixed manifold so you know about the tensor product of vector spaces you can also tensor together vector bundles on the same manifold and then you get another vector bundle on that manifold um, the sections of E this is a, the set of all smooth sections of E which is a real vector space because you can add together um, sections you can multiply sections by a real number you get another section so uh, I want a map between these two infinite dimensional vector spaces uh, which has to be real linear so it preserves addition, it preserves scalar multiplication um, and it has to satisfy uh, the conditions um, uh, so I want it basically to satisfy the product rule um, so I want to take the derivative of f times s. So f is going to be a smooth real function. s is going to be a section of E. Uh, this has to be um, f times the derivative of s plus s tensored with d of f. 
Uh, so that you can think of as the product rule uh, for differentiation. Uh, it also gets called a Leibniz rule. Uh, and this is for all uh, smooth functions f going from x into the reals uh, and all smooth sections s in the sections of e. Okay, so here df is the derivative of f which we uh, suppose we already understand. Uh, we already know how to differentiate smooth functions, so we're going from knowing how to differentiate smooth functions to knowing how to, how to differentiate sections of vector bundles. So df is a section of t star of s here, so therefore s tensor ds is a section of e tensor t star of x. Um, so this is telling you, um, and this just says, well you differentiate s and then you multiply it by the function f which and so in fact gamma v is not just a real vector space it's also a module over the algebra of smooth functions on the manifold uh, x uh, that is you're allowed to mu multiply sections of e by functions and you're allowed to multiply sections of that by functions too uh, okay um, and So we also write um, nabla in the direction of a vector field V of S is equal to uh, S, uh, sorry, V dotted with nabla of S uh, for uh, V a vector field on big X, where here V is a section of T of X. Nabra of S is a section of E tensored with T star of X. And by this dot here, I mean that we, we, use, the, we use the dual pairing, uh, which basically maps Tx cross T star of X into R to, to crack together that factor and that factor to end up just in E. Um, so then nabla V of S is the derivative of uh, S in the direction V. Okay, so um, So that's the definition of the connection. There's various other ways of writing it. Um, we should know that um, connections uh, exist on uh, any vector bundle um, but uh, they're, they're non-unique. Um, Well, unless your manifold or your vector space have dimension zero. Um, so there, and, and there's usually, well, unless you've got some extra data, there's no way of choosing a, a natural one. Um, uh, so they, uh, they form uh, an infinite dimensional affine space. Uh, modelled on the infinite dimensional vector space, the sections of uh, n of e, which is just e tensor e star, tensored with the cotangent bundle of x. So the sections of this smooth sections of that vector bundle is an infinite dimensional vector space. Uh, the set of connections is an affine space, which means it looks like this, but there's no natural choice of origin, really. 
Um, okay, uh, so that's all a bit abstract. It might help to think about what connections look like in coordinates. So if you want to do coordinates for manifolds and vector bundles, what you want to do is to first choose a coordinate chart on the manifold X itself, and then choose a basis of sections of the vector bundle E uh, over, that, um, over that open set. So uh, we can write nabla um, locally, meaning just on some sufficiently small open set in the manifold X uh, in coordinates as follows. Well, firstly we choose some smooth coordinates um, x1 up to xn uh, on an open set u contained in x. So um, the upper i, the, the upper numbers here, they're just indices. They're not powers. Um, for the tensor notation on manifolds, it's conventional to put the the index of coordinates upstairs uh, because it fits well with the, uh, the, the the kind of usual index notation for tensors. Um, uh, and then we also choose a, a basis of sections. Um, let's say E1 up to EK. Um, so I'm going to write these things as XIs and these things as E alphas. So I'm going to use a Roman indices for the coordinate indices, Greek indices for the, uh, the section, uh, the, the vector bundle indices, um, for E on U. So you can only choose a a base of sections like this if the vector bundle is trivial, but by the definition of vector bundle it's always trivial on small enough open sets. So if you use a small open set in X, just a ball around a point, let's say, then the vector bundle is trivial on that ball and we can choose a basis of sections of it. Uh, so then we can write the derivative of some from alpha is 1 up to k of uh, f lower alpha e upper alpha uh, is equal to the sum uh, over all alpha is 1 up to k. So k is the rank of my vector bundle and i is 1 up to n, where n is the dimension of the manifold x. It's the sum of partial f alpha partial x upper i um, times e alpha tensor dx i. So this is the obvious thing you'd write down if you're trying to differentiate this thing. Um, but you need to include whatever uh, contributions from the derivatives of the e alphas as well. Uh, as well as the derivatives of the, the functions f alpha. Um, so plus the sum over all alpha and beta is 1 up to k and i is 1 up to n of gamma alpha beta i times f alpha times uh, e beta times, or tensored with, dx upper i. Um, <coughs> uh, and this would be true uh, for um, <coughs> smooth functions uh, or f alpha going from u into r. Well, so this has to be true for all smooth functions f alphas um, and, uh, and for some smooth functions gamma alpha 
beta i going from u into r. Okay, so the gamma alpha betas, uh, that's a kind of coordinate representation of your connection. And that's the kind of free data in the connection. Um, so any, locally at least, any smooth functions, gamma alpha beta i, give you a connection. Um, uh, this is a kind of the general form of um, something satisfying this, uh, this Leibniz rule, this product rule here. Um, in fact, you, you, it's not difficult to show that um, once, you, once you've trivialized uh, your vector bundle and coordinates, then uh, the map NABLA satisfies this condition for all f and s, if and only if it is of this form for some, uh, for some gammas. Um, okay, so uh, the gamma, alpha, beta, i uh, are called uh, Christoffel symbols. Um, uh, and uh, you can define them. by, uh, if you take the derivative of E alpha, this will be, this is on U, this is the sum over all beta is 1 up to k and I is 1 up to n of uh, gamma lower upper alpha lower beta I times E beta tensor dx I. Okay, so if you're familiar with the uh, the tensor uh, index for notation, uh, well, the, the, the index notation for tensors, um, you tend to have upper indices and lower indices. In this case, I've got two vector bundles going on. Uh, I've got my vector bundle E, um, and I've also got the, the, the cotangent bundle T star of X. Uh, so uh, the I is a T star of X index. The alpha and the beta are both E indices, but the Alpha is basically E, the beta is the dual E star. Um, uh, so later on I'm going to fix my vector bundle to be the tangent bundle, uh, and then I'll use all Roman indices uh, rather than having Greek indices for E's and uh, Roman indices for tangent bundle indices. Now uh, these Christoffel indices, they look as though they're some kind of tensor, uh, but technically they're not, they're not a tensor. Um, and the, the important thing about tensors is that, okay, so once you choose a coordinate system, then you get some kind of generalized matrix of functions. Um, and then, but then if you change coordinates, that generalized matrix of functions is supposed to change by kind of matrix multiplication of each index by the, uh, the dx by dy, um, kind of the, the Jacobian of, of the, the change of coordinates. Um, but these things don't have that transformation law when you change coordinates. Um, they have that transformation law plus some kind of extra term involving uh, second derivatives of uh, one coordinates with respect to the other, or one set base of sections with respect to the other. Uh, so it's kind of important that these guys are not, are not actually a tensor. Um, and setting, so for that reason, setting gamma equals zero is not a natural choice. Because gamma equals zero in one coordinate system, or one uh, set of uh, trivialization of E, would not correspond to gamma equals zero for a different set of coordinates. Okay. Um, any questions at this point? No? Um, okay, so I, I think we probably have a break now. Um, but I've then forgotten what the next time is.